Okay, so take two. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do is check the meter, make sure it works. On battery, we've got a good check and we've got a good reading. Next thing we're gonna do is zero in the meter on ohms. So as I push down the meter, we have a look. We have zero, so I've zeroed in okay, no problems. So what we're gonna do now is check to make sure that our reading from the earth state to the top of the earth bar, the MEN link's been left in, it doesn't matter because it's not making any difference. We're not doing insulation resistance, we're doing continuity. Continuity is based on the blue on the scale down here from three to 500 ohms. So I'm gonna go from the earth stake up to the earth bar as well, and I've got zero. The minimum reading I should be getting is 0 0.5, no more. All right, under the, under the testing, uh, one of the tests there, it says it shall not exceed 0 0.8. Sorry, 0 0.5. The problem you've got too, if you have a hot water service or a stove or anything hooked up, it could give you a very false reading that it could be under one, under 0 0.5 it might, because they read down to earth. Do you understand what I'm getting at? That would be more on insulation resistance, but what I'm getting at is, sometimes you'll get a dead short and funny readings when you've got stoves and things like that, especially on insulation resistance. So we'll, we'll see that in a minute when we go to the next couple of tests. So I've got that. The other one I'm going to do is my bonding conductor. So I'm going to go from the frame here to the earth bar and we get a low reading as well. All right. So we don't have a tap or anything out here. Um, the other thing is that um, people go to me outside the case here. You go and test all your potential bonding and circuit earth as well. So all your earth coming in here, you would go out to the furthest point, come back to the earth bar. So I'd come out, test my furthest point come back to here and make sure I've got zero ohms, okay? Anything higher will be a problem because um, you'll have a higher resistance coming back. That means that you've got a problem if you're doing the fault current. Why do we have the MEN link for as well? To give them an alternative path back up through the neutral to the transformer and back. So it gives us a path back for the lowest current. All right, fault current, okay? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is ask for all, all sub-circuit earth, is that correct? Yes, uh, we've done protective earthing conductors. We've done those. We shouldn't have more than 0.5 on those, all right? And the bonding conductor, which I did to ground here, was no more than 0.5 as well. So once we've, we've done that, we're gonna do insulation resistance test. The insulation resistance test means I need to go to 500 volts. Why 500? Because it's a 230 volt circuit. If it was a three phase motor or three phase board, we then test on a thousand volts DC. This is a 500 volt DC um, point we're putting through it. What's some of the most important things I should have removed out of the circuit? The MEN. Sorry? The MEN. The MEN pulled out as well. But what I'm saying is all electronics have to be removed. All right, so anything we're gonna do. So I'm gonna pull the MEN link out. I'll grab my screwdriver. So this is a solid bar MEN link. I and me personally prefer a um, what do you call it, like a bit of cable, because they're easy to pull out. This one you've got to try to undo all four screws. They become a little bit, um, what do you call it, pedantic to get out. Actually, I've taken all the screw out of that one. I'll just pull this out for a sec. So this is a solid link, and it's out now. It looks like that. These are mostly joined to join the neutrals together, so when you put a put them in here, they all protect